If you recall, last week we started solving trigonometric equations. We have kind of been doing this since the very beginning. In the very beginning, we were using inverse trig functions to find angles in right triangles. That was the first context where we used inverse trig functions to find angles. And we didn't have to worry about any of this quadrant stuff because we were always looking for an acute angle. Because we know that the right angle in a right triangle has to be the biggest angle. And so the other two angles are going to be smaller than 90. So we didn't have to worry about quadrants. We didn't have to worry about plus and minus because everything was a distance. So it was all positive. And we use inverse trig functions to find angles. We added to that once we started opening up angles into different quadrants. So here we want uh, to solve a trig equation where theta can be anywhere in the circle. So we have broken it into two parts. First, we use the inverse trig function to find a reference angle. And then we use the sine plus or minus to find quadrants. Then we just take the reference angle and put it in the appropriate quadrants. And that'll give us the solutions once around the circle. So we wanna look at some variations of this today. Let's start with a basic problem. I need to calculate this a little bit. To do product placement. So to do this, to find the reference angle, we're gonna produce our Texas Instruments TI-84 plus CE. Exactly. With the backlit LED display. So in the middle of the night, you can be doing some calculations. It's much better than the non flat backlit original and completely different than the blacklit one, which is, well, it's the stoner one, let's just be honest. It comes with a pineapple and ham pizza. Get rid of all those old things. All right. Oh, and I mixed my, I did the thing I said I wouldn't do. I wanted theta to be in degrees. Oh. Fortunately, it's easy to correct mistakes on my rocket book, reusable notebook. I'm gonna act, maybe I should just come in one semester and act like I have sponsorships. Like get a Texas Instruments patch and put it on my shirt or something like that. And then, um, oh, when I turn around, I can have Expo markers on the back. And then let's see, I'm also using Pilot Friction Gel inks for gels. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we could really avoid it. Anyway, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. I wanted to change this from zero to 360. If you can get news taking notes in pen, I kind of recommend these. No, that's not a sponsored post or anything like that. That's just, that's just a fact. You care for it properly and it lasts a pretty long time. So, Let's solve this equation for theta between zero and 360. So this is, no, this is interval notation that I'm using over here. This says for theta, although theta does not equal, this says theta is an element of the numbers from zero to 360. So we're just saying zero is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to 360. Zero is the left end, 360 is the right end. We use square brackets to indicate I want to include the endpoint. So square brackets for or equals to. This is called interval notation.
So it means that the 360 is part of the interval. So the included part is the or equal to. So we do the same thing we did last time. I don't think I matched the colors correctly, but we'll, we'll just have to run with it. I'm going to use a the inverse trig function. First of all, I want to make sure I'm in degrees. And we'll do sine inverse of 0.7. Don't worry about the plus or minus. That's quadrant information. And we're trying to solve for all. So sine inverse of 0.7 in degrees is 44.4 um, degrees. So our reference angle. Then we look at the sine of the 0.7 and it's negative. Sine is negative in quadrant three and quadrant four. So I'm just gonna take 44.4 .4 and put it in quadrant three and quadrant four. So this is the same thing I was doing yesterday. When I say solve for theta between zero and three sixty, I just want once around what are our what are our solutions. Now I want to look at variations of these things. I want to include just like when we just like when we were graphing our sinusoidal functions. I want to include variations of these two. So I start with uh, multiplying after the trig function. So let's suppose that we have something like four times the sine of theta is negative zero point seven. What we notice here is that I don't just have sine of theta is negative 0.7. I've got four times the sine of theta is negative 0.7. There's another operation. In the previous example, there was one thing that happened to theta. Find the sine of theta. In this example, there are two things that happen to, say, the sine, to theta. First, find the sine of theta. Second, multiply by four. What do your algebraic instincts tell you to do first to solve this equation? First thing that would occur to you to do in this equation. Divide by four. If we think about what solving an equation is, it makes sense that we'll want to divide by four. When we're solving an equation, we want to perform inverse operations in reverse order. Going from theta to the negative 0.7. First, we did the sine. Second, we multiplied by four. So if we're going to undo that process, we've got to do inverse operations in reverse order. First, to solve, first we'll divide by the four. That's the inverse of multiplying by four. And second, 
we'll do the sine inverse. That's when we start doing the reference angle business. So we're going to divide by four. Point one seven five. And now we can do the sine inverse part. Now we'll go to the reference angle. Once again, don't worry about the negative, we'll take care of that with the quadrants. So I want the sine inverse of 0.175. So 10.1 degree angle. And since sine is still negative, we're gonna put this in quadrant three and quadrant four. And sine is negative in quadrant three and quadrant four. So theta will be the uh, 180 plus the 10.1. And also 360 minus 10.1, 350 point negative one. If we think about what happened. This is still four. So if we think about what happened, what is this equation telling us? It's saying start with theta, find the sine of theta first, multiply by four second, you'll be at negative 0.7. So what happened in this equation that turned theta into a negative 0.7, the first operation that happened was sine. And the second operation happened that happened was multiply by four. So our plan for solving should be inverse operations in reverse order. So to turn the negative 0.7 back into theta, first we'll divide by four and second, We'll do sine inverse. The analysis wasn't necessary because we had already solved the problem. We need to think about the process. We need to learn how to read what the equations are telling us. So that we know what to do when. It's easy to say just do the same thing to both sides of the equation, to both sides of the equation, but that raises two questions. What things to do and what order to do them? And so that's why I like to think of inverse operations in reverse order. We're going to solve using inverse operations in reverse order. This is going to make us focus on reading the expression and really thinking about what's going on, rather, or what the equation is telling us, rather than just trying to go based on some kind of visual cue. Any questions? Is everybody okay?
So I've included another operation or a different operation. I've got multiplication by two, but it's in a different spot. This multiplication by two is happening before the sign. This is a different expression than the previous one, even though they involve similar operations. The first one is first do sign, then multiply by four. This one says first multiply by two, then do the sign. So the order of the operations is different in this equation. The order of operations in this equation, first multiply by two, and then second do the sign. So if we think in terms of solving by inverse operations in reverse order, first, we're gonna do the sine inverse business. And second, we're gonna divide by two. This morning, I started off with bare feet. I performed the operation of put sock on, then I perform the operation of put shoe on. So to get back to bare feet, I have to take my shoes off, then my socks off. I have to perform inverse operations in reverse order. I can't take my socks off first, mostly because my socks don't have a big hole in them. So clearly, like the trick quest, it's not a trick question. It's like, oh, well, if there was a hole in the front of your sock and you could put it all the way through, and then put it over your shoe first, oh, which just tells me that you have holes in the top. I'm not saying go out and buy new socks if you can't afford them, but I am saying that means you get to learn how to darn socks. Any questions? Not about socks. I tried using that analogy. It was in Southern California, fancy place called San Diego. And they're like, oh, what are socks, bro? Math is much more difficult in Southern California because they're in math, there are things called like terms. And so I'd be like, oh, 3x plus 5y. These are not like terms. I was like, oh, excuse me. They're separated by plus. They're totally like terms. I'm like, oh, that's not what I meant. And they're like, well, what's what you said? I'm like, well, get out. I'm just kidding. I never taught in San Diego. Those records are sealed. I'm just kidding. There's no sealed record. That anybody knows that exactly. Sometimes people ask, you know, if you had to do it all over again, would you do it the same? Said, Absolutely not. I'd to try to get into San Diego, San Diego State or UC San Diego, doesn't matter. Find a school in San Diego. And people are like, oh, why? Because the program is like, well, absolutely not. I don't know if you've heard, but there are beaches in sundown in San Diego, and I like those things. They're going to ask you where you're going to transfer to. If you're going to transfer, transfer somewhere you want to live for a couple of years. Oh, I'm going to go to the University of North Dakota. Oh, what's in North Dakota that you like? Nothing. I'm going to be miserable if I'm going to go to school there. Why are you going to go to school and be miserable? If you don't like the cold, do not go to the University of North Dakota. I don't care what the program is. You know what I mean? People can transfer into Davis and stuff like that. Like, oh, uh, studying agriculture or veterinary medicine? It's like, oh, no, math. Michael, you can study math anywhere. Why would you want to do that in Davis? I've been to Davis. You know what I mean? Then they're like, oh, well, it's kind of halfway between, you know, the mountains and the beach. Why not live at one or the other? Why, want, why would you want to be in the middle? Why not live in the mountains for the occasional trip to the beach or live at the beach for the occasional trip up to the mountains? Why do you want to be in the middle? What's that? I don't know. I think zero on one side, but it is better than four 
zero and four. I'd rather zero and four than two and two. And I'd pick the one that I would do more often and live there, which is why you all over again. Probably not University of San Diego because that's private and therefore ridiculously expensive. So in this case, because it's sine of two theta and not four sine theta like we had before, the first thing we have to do is the reference angle stuff. Here's the other thing that we have to worry about. We want the sine of two theta for uh, 0.7. So we need to figure out where we need to solve. And we want theta to land between zero and 360. So. Well, let's just let's just work out the detail. First thing we're going to do is we're going to find the reference angle. Note that the reference angle is not going to be for theta. The reference angle is going to be for two theta. So it's not a theta reference angle. It's a two theta reference angle. Same as before. First, we're doing the sine inverse thing, which means finding reference angles, putting them into the appropriate quadrants. We have a negative 0.7, sine is negative in quadrant three and quadrant four. So I get the two uh, angles that I had before, 224 and the 315, but those aren't thetas. Those are two thetas because I haven't done the divide by two yet. So two theta is 224.4 plus 315 and 315.6. I didn't put the reference angle for theta in quadrant three and quadrant four. I put the reference angle for two theta in quadrant three and quadrant four. But we still have another operation to go. The other operation is divide by two. So theta is 224 divided by two. And then we're done. Or are we? Any questions on the order of the operations here? I know that there's no trig functions on the order of operations if you think of order of operations as PEMDAS, but PEMDAS is trash. I need you to stop thinking about PEMDAS as the order of operations. PEMDAS is trash. It needs to go away. Never say PEMDAS again, at least when I'm around. I will flunk you. Not just this class all of your classes. I take off so many points in this class, you land back in middle school. It used to be that that many points taken off would land you in high school, but inflation back in the middle school. It's terrible. Old Billy Madison situation. It's like those uh, MMOs where if your, your character dies, you actually lose experience points. Hardcore mode. I'm just kidding. A million points still land you back in high school, but that is a fate worse than anybody should ever deserve. So the problem here is that we don't have all the angles for theta between zero and 360 because we divided the theta by two. If we want all the theta between zero and 360, we got to figure out all the two thetas that we need to find. So that's the extra twist on this third example. Z these are not the thetas between zero and 360. These are the two thetas between zero and 360. 
So if I want theta between zero and 360, What is two theta going to have to be between? I'll do the hard part, zero. But if theta has to run from zero to 360, what does two theta have to run between? Zero and 720. Remember at this point, our thetas are going twice as fast. And so we've taken the period and, stretch and, take and reduced it from 360, where in one circle around, we go through one cycle. But now that the period is down to 180, for theta between zero and 360, we go around twice. So I couldn't stop with just quadrant three and quadrant four, that first trip around the circle. I'm gonna have to go another trip around the circle. Fortunately, it's easy to get uh, another trip around the circle. You just take a 224.4 and add 360. Let's add another circle onto that. That's 584. And take the 315 and add another circle, 675.6. plus 360 to both. 584.4 and 224.4 are coterminal. They both have a reference angle of 44.4 degrees in quadrant three. So 224.4 is my quadrant three angle and 315.6 is my quadrant four angle. 584.4 is another quadrant three angle. 675.6 is another quadrant four angle. So I just got two more things that I have to divide by two. So 584.4 divided by two, 292.2. And the 675.6 divided by two, it's 337.8. And now we've got all the solutions between zero and 360. If we check each of these solutions in our original equation, I would take the 112, multiply by two, And that's the negative 0.7. Then if I try the same thing with 157.8, negative 0.7. And if I try that with a 292.2, negative 0.7. If I try that with 337.8, negative 0.7. So they all work. Any questions? Is everybody okay? This is usually where we stop liking for solving to the solution. It's not just reference angle and quadrant. Now we have to start thinking about what's going on. We're going to think about that circle as being a copy of zero to 360 again and again. Is everybody okay? It looks so very sad. Is it because you're intrigued? I get it. I was intrigued before, I know it was fun. Now this only seems like a lot to remember because it's a lot to remember and you have to remember all of it all the time in perfect detail. So it only seems like we're asking a lot because we're kind of asking a lot.
let's combine things. So let's first put a read on this and see what the op what order the operations go in. Think about being a theta, and what's the first thing that happens to you? The first thing that happens is we multiply by two. Then the, once we have two theta, we then take the sine of that. And then finally, we multiply by four. So that's what turned theta into a negative 0.7. So our inverse operations in reverse order would be first, we'll divide by four. Second, we'll do the sine inverse business. And third, we divide by two. So it's just a combination of the previous couple of examples. The other thing that we're gonna to wanna to notice is that the, um, if I want all the theta between zero and 360, I gotta find uh, two theta between zero and 720, just like before. So if theta goes between zero and 360, since I've got a two theta here, I want two theta between from zero to 720. That tells us that once you put the reference angle in the quadrant, we're gonna to have to add one more circle all around. So let's perform our inverse operations in reverse order. Take the 0.7 and divide it by four first. And so sine of two theta is point, negative 0 0.175. So first we'll have sine of two theta is negative 0.175. Next step is to do the sine inverse. That means reference angle and quadrants plus the extra circle. So our two theta reference angle Inverse trig function for the reference angle, positive and negative for the quadrant. So I'm going to have two theta is 10.1 in quadrant three. So 190.1. 10.1 in quadrant four. But then I'm going to have to go around uh, one full circle, one extra circle. So 190.1 plus a circle, 550.1. And then the 349.9 uh, plus another circle, 709.9. Nine. There's two theta between 0 and 720. Now we can go through and divide by two. I should be able to do this division by, uh, just by looking at it, but I'm standing too close to the board, so I won't be able to do simple arithmetic. I'm not very good at arithmetic anyway.
Okay, okay, okay. So we're doing this right now in the context of solving trigonometric equations. So the new function that we're including in our solving equations is trigonometric function. But this works, we can replace sine with some other function and we can still do the same thing. So for example, let's suppose I want to solve the equation four times the square root of two X is equal to Oh, it's not going to be negative, is it? Let's just go with 0.7. If we read what happened to the x here, we're only changing the middle operation. So first, we multiply by two. Second, we did a square root. And third, we multiply by four. So our solving plan first, we'll divide by four. Second, we'll do the inverse of a square root, which is to square. And third, we'll divide by two. So this is what turns X into a 0.7. So if we wanna turn 0.7 back into X, we divide by four, square it, then divide by two. So we'll start off with 0.7. We'll divide by four, not a glare. We'll divide by four, then we'll square the result, and then we'll divide the result by two, and we get 0 Now you may be thinking, dude, I totally solved this equation way before you got you finished with what you were talking about. It's like, well, that's because I was explaining it. And so if you solved it faster, that's because you weren't explaining it. Second of all, most of this stuff is not stuff that's gonna be written down. The point of being in a math class is to learn the math well enough that you don't have to do the stupid math that you learn in the math class all the time. You don't wanna write down every single step. You want to not write down every single step. You only want to write down the steps that you need to write down. So it's a personal choice. That's why I don't say show all relevant work. I say show your work. Because if you just do this, if you just read this and do the operations on your calculator and come up with a 0 0.0153, you have shown your work because it took place up here and I can't see up in your minds. I'm not allowed to look in your mind anymore. Michael like Leach, you got to stop reading students' minds. Then I'm like, well, why would you say something like that? Never mind, I already know. Then they're like, I'll stop reading my mind. I'm, like, I'm not. Did you just a minute ago? No. I'm just kidding. I can't read minds. I've been told not to. I'm just kidding. I've been told that I have to tell you that I'm incapable of doing so. But you already. So that's not the point. All this stuff that happened over here, all this stuff that happened over here is just taking place in your mind. You're just thinking about this part. This is not something that I'm asking you to write down because it doesn't make any sense to write down all these steps if you don't need to write them down. Just think them. Then it takes place on the calculator. Any questions? I don't recommend this with trig equations because there's like this whole reference angle in the appropriate quadrants business that we have to deal with. Take a break and when we come back, instead of doing this solve for two theta, let's find all the solutions and see where that goes. All right, take five.